In this problem, we've got a variety of grapefruit that is roughly normally distributed with a mean of one pound and a standard deviation of 0.12 pounds. Our job is to find out what is the probability that a randomly selected grapefruit will weigh more than 1.25 pounds. So let's begin by drawing a picture. Let X be the weight of an individual grapefruit. The average weight of grapefruit in that variety is one pound. The distribution of grapefruits has a standard deviation of 0.12 pounds. This is a nearly normal distribution. So mu plus a standard deviation would be 1.12 pounds. That's one standard deviation above the mean. One standard deviation below the mean will be 0.88 Pounds. Now because this is a normal distribution, we know that the high point of the graph will be at the mean and that at one standard deviation above the mean will be about 60% of that height and at one standard deviation below the mean will be at 60% uh, of that height. We're going to be concave down through this part of the curve and concave up out here. So there's a rough graph of the distribution. There are some other points that we know here. We know that this point, uh, 1.125, another standard deviation above that would be 1.24 pounds. That's two standard deviations above the mean. In this problem, we're interested in knowing what's the probability of us being, see that point there, would be very close to 1.25. And we're interested in the probability that the weight of the grapefruit is more than that amount. So we're interested in this little tiny area up here. It's going to be a pretty small probability. In fact, as an estimate of that probability, within two standard deviations of the mean, that area is 95% is of the population. And so outside of that is 5% of the population. So up above this one has got to be 2.5% of the population. This area is obviously less than 2.5%. Uh, so here I've pulled up an R compiler. And what we know, P norm of 1.25 in a distribution, a normal distribution, it has a mean of 1 and a standard deviation of 0 0.12 is going to tell me this green area. That's not the one that I need. I need this uh, purple area. But the total area under the curve is 1, so the thing I'm looking for is 1 minus that P norm of, uh, of 1.25 in a mean of 1 and a standard deviation of 0 0.12. So we can run that command in R obtain a result of 0 0.0186, so on. It wasn't surprising that that was less than 2.5%. It's about a 1.8%, 1.9%. Now we're going to solve the problem in a second way. I'm going to ask R to do some calculating for me here. The mean that we're looking at is 1, and the standard deviation that we're looking at is 0 0.12. I could find the z-score for this 1.25. Remember that the z-score is just how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. So we take that 1.25, our sample statistic, minus mu. That tells me how far I am. In this case, I'm a positive amount, more than two standard deviations uh, above. Divided by, oops, this is the standard deviation here. Divided by the standard deviation. So that's telling me how many standard deviations this number is away from the mean. We can see in the picture that it's more than two standard deviations away from the mean. And therefore, we could find the answer by looking at 1 minus a p norm of z. So let's put that script into R and compare results. So here's our given information. We knew that the mean of our population was 1. This, uh, our standard deviation was 0 0.12. The, our sample statistic was 1.25, and so therefore we can calculate the z-value. Remember that the z-value is just saying how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. So we take our x, our 1.25, minus the mean. That tells me how far I'm away, and then we divide by a standard deviation. So there's our z-value, and let's shout out that z-value. So the z-value, as we noticed in our picture, it's bigger than two standard deviations away from the mean. So it's a 2.0833333 standard deviations away from the mean. So there's our script for finding that z-value. Now let's draw a picture of that standard normal curve. So we're translating this normal curve to a standard normal curve. The mean gets translated to zero because it's zero standard deviations.
deviations away from the mean. The uh, 1.12, which is one standard deviation above the mean, gets translated to 1. The 0.18 gets translated to a minus 1. This is a normal distribution, so the high point occurs at the mean. These values will be about 60% of that high point will be concave down through here and concave up going out this way. So that's one standard deviation above the mean. That's two. There's three up here somewhere. We noticed that our z value was 2.0833333. It was a little above where two is. So that z value is about here. Notice how similar these two graphs look like. So we've reduced the problem to finding the probability that z is greater than that 2.0833. So we're interested in the z values being greater than that amount, so we're interested in that area. Continuing our R script by adding the line that says P norm of this number would tell me this area down here. That's the wrong amount. We need to find this area. So one, the total area under the curve is 1. So if we add to this script 1 minus the P norm of the Z that we calculated up here, then that's going to tell us that right amount. So there we are finding the area above a particular value. So now that we know the z value, we can again calculate the probability using a standard normal curve. It's just a matter of looking at 1 minus the p norm of z. When we run that script, we notice that in line 1, we calculated the probability that the weight of, the, of a grapefruit is more than 1.25 pounds. We calculated what the, the z value was of 1.25. It's more than two standard deviations above the mean. Then we recalculated the probability with the standard normal curve and notice, of course, that those two are the same. The point here is that often we will change values to z values and do our calculations in the standard normal curve.